Hey, what's up everyone? It's Duncan from 4xTouring.com. A brand new year and all the very best to each and every one of you. Um, thought I'd give you a channel update. An update on um, Dysaurus and I have, I need your help, I need your advice. I have a question for you and uh, I'll mention that towards the end of the video. So very quickly, um, I haven't been posting videos as often as I used to, particularly the second half of last year. And, I, and my apologies for that. And I miss interacting with the, each and every one of you, the rest of the community. Well, the thing was, during the time of the pandemic, we being self-employed, we got knocked pretty badly. Work was few and far between. And then towards the second half of last year, it picked up. And it so pretty happy about that. But then workload became so much and trying to keep a balance between making videos and getting work done across to clients was a bit of a challenge. So I slacked off in getting videos done. So my apologies for that. And uh, I know there's many of you who are faithful and following the channel and supporting the channel and write to me through social media. So I really appreciate it, but I, I do apologize for you know not having done the regular videos as I used to. And, and by the way, please follow me on um, Instagram. I am not so active on Facebook, but on Instagram, if you go in and punch in my name or four by touring it pops up and uh, I, I try and do more regular imagery updates on uh, Instagram anyway so this year intention is to try and do more trips share that with you share more product reviews share that with you as well and anything else in between now Dysaurus well Dysaurus uh, just been in for a service a few days ago got it all checked and uh, that worked out perfectly and for those of you who've been following the channel for a while you'd remember um, the last year i had a problem with dysaurus where it wouldn't start because there was a moisture buildup in the electrics now if you haven't watched that video i'll leave a link uh, somewhere up here go take a look anyway i have narrowed it down to exactly where the problem has been and i thought i'll share that with you particularly if you got a uh, a petrol 80 series the diesels would not have this problem i wouldn't think so so the problem was moisture building up in the electrics okay now if you have an 80 or even a, one of these older model vehicles and if you've got you know starting problems particularly on wet days then first of all go and check your distributor and that's the distributor in the 80 series right over here if you see um oil weeping not oil leaking but oil weeping around the where the distributor gets mounted then that's a telltale sign that there's the seal is no longer good or the gasket and that means the moisture as much as oil can leak out that means the moisture can get in particularly when it's parked so if you see that in your vehicle take a look on and get it changed now, Dysaurus didn't have that problem, thankfully, but the problem was elsewhere, and I'll show you where it was. And uh, so in the, I just wanna get the camera going over here. All right, so over here, this is the coil, the coil that sends the spark across to the um, distributor. Now, the coil is mounted onto the shock mount here, which is okay, that's how Toyota intended it. I'm sure they had good reasons for putting it there. I would have thought a bit higher would have been great, but anyway. But what was happening in my case, in Dysaurus's case, was the um, whenever I go over a puddle and water splashes, and water gets onto that, the coil, and then the engine switches off. And I was wondering, how in the world could that happen? And then I realized this. So these are known as splash guards and in the case of Dysaurus none of them was there and I, I didn't realize this until quite recently that means when I bought Dysaurus it was never there uh, and that was what's happening so every time the the, the wheel hits um, a puddle or even the, the smallest of puddles water would get pushed in and right onto the coil gets onto the electrics and and that knocked the um, engine off completely. So went across to the local Toyota dealer. They had it in stock, cost about 200 Aussie dollars and got the entire set 
it's easy very easy to install and that's taken care of i did intentionally drive over a puddle nothing happened so i'm assuming i've got the problem solved now a couple of other things uh nothing major upgrades i did get myself a shower tent um i'll do a separate video on the shower tent for those of you who are interested this is an xtm brand the, there's many other manufacturers who produce these we used to carry uh, a shower tent which one of those tents you got to put up on the side of the camp and then peg it down and that was a real pain uh, a, a strong gust of wind and the whole thing would you know topple over and um, so we decided to get one of these and Ajani loves it so I'll, I'll do a separate video on that another time apart from that we're thinking of getting a rooftop tent i am not entirely decided on um, whether i'm going for the clamshell type or the conventional type of rooftop tent i'm not sure but when that happens you'll be the first to know now um i need your advice on something so i am trying to get rid of carrying having to carry the high lift jack I just feel that it's a lot of weight and if I can shed as much weight as I can, fantastic. And over Christmas, when we were visiting family in Melbourne, my brother-in-law, a Johnny's brother, and a huge shout out to him, he gave me as a gift um, an exhaust jack. So I've got an exhaust jack sitting around, uh, which I can carry with me when I travel. So the question, because I've never used an exhaust jack, I've, I know how they work. I've seen them at work, but I never had one myself. So the question to you, for any of you who've got exhaust jacks, can I carry the exhaust jack and then completely get rid of my high lift jack? Is that a good idea? Will the exhaust jack be good enough for whatever situation if I want to lift the vehicle up? Now, I do carry a smaller bottle jack, but that's a bit of a mission to get onto, you know, in a, if, if I'm bogged or I need some kind of, lifting where ground clearance is not there. So love to hear from you. And uh, please tell me in your experiences, what do you think? Should I still continue to carry both or can I get rid of that? If I can get rid of that, brilliant. So uh, looking forward to your comments in the com comments below and see what you have to say about it. Well, that's it for today's video. Hoping to bring more regular videos as I used to in the past. Thank you for the love and support. I really appreciate your support. I love the community. And uh, looking forward to seeing you in another video real soon. Thanks for watching.